Okay, again, uh, so you know, please introduce yourself, good sir. Yeah, uh, what's up, everybody? I'm Clyde McNeil. I'm a content creator, videographer, uh, professional weirdo, as I like to put it. Uh, I essentially specialize in video game parodies, uh, things of that nature. You know, it's funny that when I was thinking about because I what came across your content from the uh, the is the video where you were on a date and then she ended up having the blue hair, um, and you tried to warn her like, like, um, uh, oh, it might have been smashing a geek. It might have been where I came into her house with the the greenish curly hair. Uh, uh, it might have been a video before. It was like the the one that I actually saw was was um because I think she. Uh, you tried to warn her. And then, and then she ended up. I think the following night, she had she ended up having blue hair, and she's just like, "How do I get rid of this?" Um, yeah, okay, it, that was um, a smashing the geek series I had with uh, another content creator. Shout out to Denegra. Um We kind of discontinued it just because we're like doing some different things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the premise of that was that I'm obviously me, Cloudy a geek. Uh, so I showed up on a blind date with my cosplay hair, the Deku wig, in the first episode. And she's like a regular woman. She's just like, what is this? What, what is this? This is weird. This is wild. So anyway, long story short, is I convinced her to, hey, look, I know you don't like me, but let's lay together. Let's be intimate. To keep it PG. And uh, she's like, you know what? Fine. It's a crappy date anyway. I'm gonna do it. And then when she wakes up the next day, she now has the cosplay hair. Like that's a side effect of this character when he gets with with women. They they spawn the cosplay hair. So for example, if I show up as Cloud Strike and we do something thing the next morning she's gonna have cloud striker it was a, it was a goofy concept but that's what you saw where the next time i saw her she had the hair still in her head and she's like how, what did you do to me what, how do i get this off how do i get this off and then it eventually dissipates and rinse and repeat but yeah right oh man because your your content is like it, it's it's one of those i don't know if it's because um no it's not because of the the convention because it's just like one of those things you're so relatable and it's like like I see you, just like yeah, this is one of my friends from high school. Just like you know, like we we would be friends, we'd be hanging out, playing video games and stuff like that. Uh, but how did you uh, find yourself doing this type of content? Well, I would say that kind of like what I mentioned before we we started the interview. Um, I used to be big in the cosplay scene, doing Akio work, uh, cosplay music videos. So once I started with that, just kind of getting immersed in this world, you know, filming a lot of people, they get to know me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I started to tell myself, I kind of want to start my own videos with the full costumes, the hair, everything. Uh, so I kind of deviated into that. And honestly, it's just an extension of uh, everything I've grown up loving. You know, like it's, you know, anime, video games, geek culture, all that stuff. But now we can actually do it, you know, live and in person. And once I used all my videographer knowledge, coupled with my newfound love for like dressing up and doing it, I just hit the ground running, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna make the wildest, just wackiest videos using all the skills I have, and I want it to be relatable, you know, like for all my millennials out there, you know, that's in the same like age bracket as me, and I just want to do something that's like really they can get, like they understand, like this guy's not afraid to put himself out there. Again, like you mentioned, I'd be that guy you hang out with in the lunchroom, goofing around at the table, talking about, yeah, man, it's like Final Fantasy, I did, you know, yada yada. Like I'm, 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 I'm open with it, you know. Like I have nothing to prove to anyone but myself, and I think that's why people resonate with my content. Because even at the con today or this weekend, so many people have come up like, "Yo, Cloudy, like love your stuff, man." Like, and that touches me because like I have to be unapologetically cloudy. If I hold back, then it's not authentic. You know what I mean? True, true. It's, 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 it's weak. And so like, if I'm gonna be weird, you're gonna get some full weirdness, and that's that's kind of how I roll. So, um, as far as your uh, your videography cinematography techniques and, and skills because i've noticed like some of the the shots that you would use as far as um uh like grand, grand theft auto and you're recreating these video game shots like where where did you get your uh, your skill set from honestly um you kind of nailed on the head with that where you know one of my main influences is video games so you grow up playing these things and you see them all the time you know just imagine Think back, every day you get home from school, you're playing this game, you're absorbing that, that experience, that 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 aesthetic, that uh, everything, the functionality. So for me, 
I used to imitate, this is not embarrassing to admit, I mean, for me, like, I used to walk around my house acting like those video game characters. If they had a certain walk, specifically, uh, John, not John, um, Tommy Versetti from Grand Theft Auto, uh, Vice City, uh, which rest in peace, Ray uh, Liotta, he acted as Bastard, so he was a voice actor for him. But right. I used to imitate the way he walked, because it was so goofy, and his legs were like, it was just funny. So, like, yeah, so I would find myself doing that for every game I played, like Mario, Zelda. And it was a thing I've done since I was a kid, like naturally, like I was just like a weird kid. <laughs> but like, taking all of that that I absorbed in my head once I became a videographer, I'm like, I'm gonna recreate these to see if anyone else can remember what this felt like. And that's the common uh, denominator comment I get is like, this feels like I'm playing the game. This feels like, it's best when I do uh, Kingdom Hearts Sora, um, when I run around like him or walk, every, every comment, every other comment is like, what? It, it's so accurate. The, the bounce, the, the, how do you, right. and that's just an extension of what I used to do as a kid, just in my adulthood, recreating that stuff, so yeah. Hey, every time you get knocked out from other characters, it's hilarious. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> definitely, uh, I've been fucking sore a lot in my content, so oh, I'm sorry, man. I don't know if I'm going to stand here for a second. Um, yeah, just memorizing those camera angles and the aesthetic of the mm. game, I apply that to my videos now, and it's just like, I want to make that in real life, you know, if it's a uh, Grand Theft Auto style, Game, I want the camera always behind me, right? Following and have the heads up display looking the same, the same walk pattern, the same everything. So, okay, I so I mean, definitely gotta ask this. Like, what would you say to to uh, those future content creators that's like on the fence, like uh, you know, this is what I love, and and not be uh, gun shy to to uh, express themselves through this medium. Yeah, um, and actually, when I do like uh, interviews on like um, Instagram and stuff like that, I get this question a lot. And the best answer I always give is, you kind of have to be your biggest fan. You have to be your biggest fan. So when I write these content, there's a version of Cloudy watching me, and like if he laughs, if he thinks it's hilarious, if he thinks it's dumb, like I'm kind of operating on that. You know what I mean? Like obviously, I care about my fan base and like what people think, but not to the extent of what I think. I'm gonna call it Shadow Cloudy uh, thinks. Cause that's who I'm trying to kind of hone in on. It's like, hey man, is me doing this, that make me laugh? Did that make me feel something? It did? Cool, I love it. You know what I mean? Even if a bunch of people are like, that was dumb, that was weird, that was, it doesn't phase me. So I would say for any creators out there, I don't know if I can look like, right in the camera today, uh, Julian. <laughs> okay, here it is. So any creators out there, I, I implore you, be your biggest fan. And that's not arrogance, it's just confidence in what you do. Because I promise you, you'll be surprised how many people resonate with what you're doing for you. Because when they see that you're vibing and you don't care really what anyone else thinks, it's a confidence that exudes, like it, you exude a confidence that I can't put into words, but take it from someone who's had like literally over 60 people at this convention run up on them like, how do you do it, how do you do it? Uh, it's real, so you should do the same. Not because I told you to, but it's just, I'm encouraging you to do it. Believe in you, believe in the me. That believes in you, Brady Garland, like our fans out there, uh, and I, <laughs> and I think you'll do fine. As far as MomoCon, like your your experience here and and the uh, the warm reception, like what what are it, it's not over yet because this is pretty much the the high point for Saturday. Um, what's what's been some of the high points uh, and what you were looking to experience here at MomoCon? Um, honestly, well, first off, I'm just shell shocked because we're back, you know, after being two years of <laughs> not right. doing it. Um, but like I kind of mentioned earlier, how I used to be a cosplay videographer, um, it was a different kind of love I used to get when I did that versus now. Because the love back then was more like, and this isn't a stat but it was more like, a, hey, we like you because you're filming us and making us look cool, and we love that. But like any skits or anything I did, it wasn't really that well received, which is fine. But versus now, where people see me, and it's no longer about me being a cosplay videographer. It's more like, we saw your videos, we love those videos, that one particular video you did touched me. Like, that's the kind of reception I'm getting here. So like, being here at Momocon, I'm glad it happened here, because it's like, I don't know, I really love being out here. You know, it's one of my favorite times. Um, just that kind of reception has now put Momocon in a different bracket in my mind. You know, something I definitely look forward to coming back to, even if it's not that kind of reception every time, it's just knowing that this happened after a pandemic and a half, or two year pandemic, however you want to look at it. Um, that's what's really sticking out for me for this uh, this experience. But I'm 